Hey guys, Sam here. You may be wondering, what the hell am I looking at? Well, I have been helping a secret project behind the scenes for a couple months now, ever since like late March. And that is a audio dub adaptation of the first Devil May Cry novel. Personally, I've never read it up until now, and I love it. I really do. But there is a reason why it's on the channel. And that is because I am actually providing my voice as the narrator. Yeah, I thought I thought I was too godlike to be Dante anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I am providing my voice as the narrator, and I'm so happy with it that I thought this needed more exposure, and I thought Hype Labs would be the perfect way to do it. So if on a, if you like what you hear at the end of this, do let us know in the comments because I would love to post the whole entire thing on the channel. But if you want to support the official release. Go to Childish Productions in the description below, as he's the dude who ran this whole thing, not me. So, thank you, Lighty. You really made this whole project spark. If it weren't for you, this whole thing wouldn't be possible. So, I'm going to shut up now. I want to, but before I shut up, I'm going to give a proper thanks to the cast and crew, which you can also find below as well, who also did amazing work on this first chapter. So, without further ado, Devil May Cry, the audio dub. Humming neon lights and glittering raindrops aren't enough to stave off the inky night. Blackness always envelops the city. Only the rising sun unveils the familiar world. This unrelenting cycle of light and dark grinds on, just as it has for millennia. But there are things that remain hidden even in the light of day. Inhuman vapors come from the tangle of sun-cast shadows, and at night, those shadows merge with the darkness, and the creatures that dwell there are temporarily released. No one could pull back this curtain between worlds and see things as they truly are. No one, except for one man. It's all over, Tony! Denver shifted his weight, trying to cut an imposing figure but settling for, in charge. He eyed Tony Redgrave, who stood at the far end of the alley. His prey had a penchant for flamboyance, cloaking his red leather coat and enough silver ornamentation to deck out more than one Christmas tree. The charms and talismans jangled as Tony turned to face him. Again? Man, I'm so tired of the shtick. Change the channel, would you, Mad Dog? Denver's bristled. This was, in fact, the 99th time he had gone after Tony. Any ordinary gangster would have stopped by the fifth time, tenth tops. But Denver's was nothing if not tenacious. He'd earned his street name for a reason. He bared his teeth. I've got 40 men, and every one of them is armed with military-issue stain makers. Today, you're gonna die. 
Denver's involuntarily glanced up toward the thick shadows that lined the alley's rooftops. Forty armed thugs. It would be like shooting fish in a barrel. You've got brass ones. I'll give you that. He smirked. You always manage to pull through. But I bet you've never had to eat this much lead. Ready to die? The alley was still. Denver shifted his weight again, uncomfortable with the tension. He could feel sweat beating on his brow and hope the thugs on the rooftops didn't notice. Sorry, were you talking to me? Tony pretended to stifle a yawn. Uh, I haven't had much sleep lately. So, can we make this quick? You bastard! Denver's yelped. He glowered at Tony. What is wrong with this guy? He either has nerves of steel or a mental condition. Either way, Denver's had had enough. You arrogant punk! Chill out, Mad Dog. You might burst something. Just die! Denver's pulled his trigger, and 40 thugs followed suit. Hundreds of bullets volleyed toward Tony, kicking up a dust cloud that soon swallowed the alley. The gun sputtered out a few seconds later. Denver's smacked his lips as his men lowered their spent weapons. Maybe that shower woke you up. Tony emerged from the dust, brushing off his jacket. Didn't I just say let's make this quick? Denver's found the clank of jewelry more annoying than the witty banter. He sucked in a lungful of air, getting ready to bellow. Suddenly, he heard the clatter of empty weapons falling to the ground. One by one, his men backed away. He screeched. What the hell? Do your job! No way! Someone shouted back. I pay you, you bastards! What's the big idea? Denver's wrapped his sausage-like fingers around the Mauser that hung at his considerable waist. Fresh sweat pulled everywhere. Why does it always turn out like this? Nobody could have survived that much lead. So why were his men lying in bloody heaps on the ground? Denver's gripped his pistol. Ninety-eight times. And now, yet again, he was poised to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Red and silver flashed from the end of the alley, near the bodies of over half of his men. The talismans jangled, and another thug sprawled on the pile. Denver's remaining men approached the dust cloud cautiously, wary of friendly fire. Denver's had no such compunction. Like hell I'm going to lose this time! He aimed at the melee and pulled the trigger. The Mauser roared, and one of his men uh. collapsed. Shit! Denver's aimed again, squeezing off another round whenever he heard the metallic chime of Tony's jacket. Sweat poured off his forehead, blurring his vision. But Denver's didn't care. Aim for the jangle. Aim for the noise! Silver flickered at the edge of his vision. Tony's hair was as ostentatious as the rest of his gear. I've got you now! We aren't doing this a hundredth time! Denver's fired three bullets in quick succession, leaving a final round in the chamber. His eyes darted around anxiously. Have you gone to hell yet? There was no answer. A light breeze dissipated the veil of smoke. Forty bodies lay soaked in red, but Denver's couldn't see a hint of silver. He stepped carefully through the corpses, looking for Tony. He must have hit him. Had to have hit him at that range. Find the body, go home, and knock back a few drinks to celebrate. His confidence returned. He could practically taste the celebratory cold beer running down his throat. Then, something caught his eye. What? Denver's felt the pit of his stomach grow cold. His mouth opened and closed like a fish's as his eyes registered the lithe figure standing alone in the alley. Silver charms clinked as Tony strode forward. What are you trying to say, Mad Dog? A gust of wind pushed the last of the dust out of the alley, brushing a strand of silver hair out of Tony's face. If you need help completing a simple sentence, maybe you should go back to grade school. He doesn't have a scratch on him. His red coat was a different story, though. It was riddled with holes. Tony held his giant sword in front of him like it was a shield. You freak! Denver spat out. Tony was nonplussed. You were aiming for the jackpot. I wouldn't expect anything less from a former Olympic sharpshooter. Too bad you've gone soft. Shut up! Denver snarled. He gestured with the Mauser. I've still got bullets left, you butt monkey! Tony lowered his sword, further enraging Denver's. Good for you. 
That's the mark of a true professional. Rage chased away the last of Denver's fear. He tightened his finger around the trigger. I'm gonna shut your arrogant hole for good! If you've got anything else to say, now's the time. Think of it as a last request. I'm so sick of hearing that. It must be like the 97th time now. Shut the hell up! Denver's pulled the trigger. The two were so close that even a blind man couldn't miss. Denver's watched as the bullet tore into his adversary's face. <laughs> I did it! Oh, really? Tony chuckled as Denver stared agape. Somehow, Tony was unscathed. He pressed the tip of his sword against Denver's throat. How was that even possible? Denver's had seen the bullet pierce the other man's skull. He's not human. Looks like I win again. You're out of your league, pal. Tony crowed, taking the Mauser before sheathing his blade. Hey, nice piece. Too bad it's a bootleg, though. A real Mauser would have the manufacturer's mark right here. Tony traced a line on the gun with his finger. Oh well, I'll take it anyway. See you later, Mad Dog. Tony spun on his heels and marched off, leaving Denver's wobbling, speechless, and totally dumbfounded. He turned at the end of the alley. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. Tony eased out of his ragged, torn coat, tossing it in Denver's direction. Take this to Gil's shop and ask her to make a new one for me, would you? Oh, and, uh, don't forget to tip her. Shit! Why the hell do I have to be his errand boy? Denver skulked down the sidewalk, bitter and defeated. It was almost morning, soon the sun would rise, and skulking would become a lot more difficult, as Denver's didn't want to run into anyone that he knew. He sneezed as he darted from building to building. <laughs> Damn it! First a defeat, now a cold! Denver sidled onto a road that led out of town. It wouldn't be good to be seen in this state. Luckily, the banks of the former Daub River were devoid of people. He pulled a grubby handkerchief out of his pocket and trumpeted loudly. The wind picked up. Maybe it was the sweat, or maybe it was the fear of Tony. Either way, Denver shivered. He slipped into the remains of the red coat, but the patchwork of holes did little to warm him. I'd be better off throwing this damn thing away. Better than paying for repairs. Denver's had reflected. But he had come this far. Might as well go the distance. Still, a little break can't hurt. Denver sat down and crossed his legs, grumbling to himself. Tragic. Ever since Tony came around, my luck's gone to shit. All of his men were dead, making the mad dog into just a lone wolf. Only he was more like a forlorn mutt than anything else. Ninety-nine times. My reputation's kaput. Tony Redgrave had drifted into town two years ago, a young kid making short work of the underworld. Denver's wasn't the only gangster to feel the heat. Drug dealers, arms dealers, human organ dealers, illegal surgeons, anyone working for the Mafia and its rivals had found themselves on the wrong end of Tony's talismans. Tony had rejected their overtures for peace. Any other mercenary would have taken the money, no questions asked, but not Tony. He did whatever he wanted, ignoring the local power structure. Gangs who opposed him were utterly crushed, and with each defeat Tony's reputation grew. Even worse, he'd started a trend. Other mercenaries cut ties with the underworld bosses, making their own bids for independence. It put the reputations of people like Denver's on the line, men who had come to power the old-fashioned way. Tony was threatening his entire way of life. And so, Denver's had decided to do something about it. 99 times now. There wouldn't be a hundredth, Denver's knew that. He had used up the last of his goodwill to find backing for this most recent attempt. Hatching a meticulous plan and persuading old bosses to lend him money, muscle, and gear for the attack. Striking out had left Denver's with no friends and nowhere else to go. He had to keep his head down now. This wasn't a loss a man could just walk away from. Damn it! I'm screwed! Suddenly, a voice cried out.
Denver's lunged for his holster, but came up empty, as Tony had taken the Mauser. Fuck! The voice grew louder, echoing up the riverbed. Denver's eyes darted around. What's going on? What do you want? The call was coming closer. There were definitely several voices now. Denver's felt a new fear welling up inside him. Where are they coming from? Denver spun around wildly. The heavy clouds turned black, and the sky grew darker. How the hell is that possible? It's nearly dawn! No, it isn't the sky! It was everything as if the whole world was being subtly rearranged into an unknown shape. Denver's fear grew more and more primal, his thoughts tumbling into feral abandon. Even if he'd had the Mauser, he wouldn't have had been able to operate it. Dante. 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 The eerie voices were nearly upon him, but Denver's couldn't see them in the blackness. Suddenly, Denver heard a footstep beside him. He whirled around anxiously. Who's there? He was oddly comforted by the possibility that he wasn't alone. Maybe it was Tony. And then he saw it. A scythe slicing toward him. Slowly, his vision bled away. He felt something tearing into his flesh. Denver's tried to shout for help, but his voice didn't work anymore. Nothing worked anymore. Nothing but his nerve endings, transmitting endless pain as he was hacked to bits. Denver screamed silently. Finally, Day broke, but on the chapped embankment, Denver's body was nowhere to be found.